The Manhattan Project by Jordan Brower Disclaimer. Most jokes made in this video are irrelevant to actual history and are used solely for comedic value. Please, don't take any of this seriously. Please. Albert Einstein and Enrico Fermi were forced to run away from the persecution of Hitler and fascist Italy, so they packed their bags and moved to the U.S. Once there, they both agreed that it could be sort of important to inform the president about the Earth destroying atomic weapons in the hands of their arch nemesis, Nazi Germany. Fermi decided to adventure to Washington, D.C. in March to express his concerns on being blown up by Germany to government officials, but honestly, no one really cared enough to listen. They just sort of played on their phones the whole time. After being completely ignored, Einstein wrote a letter to Roosevelt, who still really wasn't concerned with the drama, but agreed to proceed slowly in order to keep up his image. In 1941, American efforts to create an atomic bomb received its code name, the Manhattan Project. Honestly, though, why was it called that? The project mainly operated out of New Mexico, which is all the way across the country, 2,000 miles away. After Roosevelt had agreed to fund the project, research began at a select few universities. Columbia University, University of Chicago, and the University of California at Berkeley. In December of 1942, Enrico Fermi led a group of physicists to produce the first controlled nuclear chain reaction under Stagg Field. After the first scientific breakthrough, there was a boom in funding and the project advanced quickly. Soon, new facilities were built at Oak Ridge, Tennessee, and Hanford, Washington, while the main facility was located in Los Alamos, New Mexico. Robert Oppenheimer was put in charge of the main facility in New Mexico. The Manhattan Project hired over 120,000 Americans, but had to keep the project a secret to prevent its exposure to Japan, Germany, or the metal from Soviets. This proved a huge issue because most people can't keep their big mouths shut to save their lives. The solution was simple. Don't tell anyone anything about the project, except for a select few scientists. Surprisingly, America's plan to keep the Soviet Union in the dark worked, mostly. Although they never really learned of the project, it was discovered after the fact that a spy named Klaus Fuchs had infiltrated the inner circle of scientists who knew about the true purpose of the project. Talk about an overachiever who isn't very good at achieving. In 1945, Oppenheimer's work on the bomb was close to completion, and the bomb was ready to be tested. On July 16th, at the Trinity site near Almogordo, New Mexico, scientists ready to witness the detonation of the world's first atomic bomb. After the unparalleled success of the atomic bomb tests, Allied powers had already defeated Germany, which kind of sucked for America. They really wanted to blow up Germany. Luckily for the U.S., Japan declared that they would fight until the bitter end. That gave them a great excuse to blow up Japan instead. In July of 1944, Japan had refused to surrender to the Allied powers, who proceeded to threaten the Japanese with prompt and utter destruction. This basically meant, hey, surrender, or we're going to blow up. Japan continued to give America the silent treatment. In order to prevent over one million more supposed casualties estimated to fight the war in Japan, President Truman agreed to drop the atomic bomb on Japan, which America kind of wanted to do anyway, in the hopes that the war would come to a quick end. Truman hoped not only that the bomb would end the war, but would also put the U.S. in a dominant position during the post-war negotiations. Hiroshima was selected as the first target, and a plane dropped the first bomb, known as Little Boy, at 8.15 a.m., and it exploded five square miles of the city. The bomb failed to convince Japanese officials to surrender, because Japan really didn't want to be associated with a bunch of crackers. I mean, white people. So, as a result, the U.S. dropped a second bomb, known as Fat Man, on the city of Nagasaki, because they were offended by the term cracker. Apparently, you can be racist towards white people. Noon of August 15, 1945, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's surrender over a radio broadcast. The formal surrender agreement was signed on September 2nd, aboard the U.S. battleship Missouri, anchored in Tokyo Bay.